The 2021-22 season was an injury-plagued one for the Los Angeles Clippers, as Kawhi Leonard missed the entire season due to an ACL injury that he suffered during the 2021 postseason, and Paul George only played 31 games due to a UCL tear in his right elbow. Despite missing their two best players though, LA still put together an impressive season by going 42-40, good enough for the 8th seed in the West. However, it just wasn't enough, and the Clippers got sent home after losing back-to-back -back games in the play-in tournament. And while the big headline may have been the injuries to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, the truth was the Clippers needed another ball handler. Marcus Morris Sr. acknowledged that during his exit interview following the loss to the Pelicans, when he said, quote, I would say one of our biggest needs is a backup point guard. We played a lot of last season without one and Morris really couldn't have said it any better. Starter Reggie Jackson had a great season and was able to suit up for 75 of the Clippers' 82 games last season, but the depth at that position was an issue. Their backup point guard options going into training camp consisted of Eric Bledsoe, Terrence Mann, and Justice Winslow, but Bled and Winslow didn't really pan out and were eventually dealt to the Blazers in a trade that brought over Norman Powell and Robert Covington. So this meant Mann had the job for the most part last season, and while he was solid, the Clippers just needed a better option. But it wasn't going to be easy. LA didn't have a lot of cap space, nor did they have many valuable trade assets outside of the Claw and PG-13, so safe to say they hit the jackpot when they bought out John Wall from the Houston Rockets this offseason. At the time of the buyout, Wall's stock was at an all-time low due to his injury history and lack of availability, as he only played 40 games since returning from injury in 2020-21, but he suffered a hamstring injury late in the season and never played another game in a Houston Rocket uniform. And this was because Houston decided to send John Wall home for the duration of the 2021-22 season while they found a suitable trade partner for him. The only problem was, nobody ever picked up the phone to talk business on a potential trade, thus forcing them into a buyout deal. So this gave the Clippers a new big three of Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and John Wall to go along with the deepest bench in the league, and expectations in LA were high. The only problem was health. Enter the 2022 preseason, and we'd get to see the first of John Wall and this new look Clippers squad. However, Wall would come off the bench after Tyron Lue decided to give Reggie Jackson the starting job. And this was nothing to really be concerned about. After all, Marcus Morris did say they needed a backup point guard, not prime John Wall. Anyways, going back to the preseason opener, it was clear Wall was still trying to get his legs under him after dropping just 5 points on 1 of 4 shooting. But it was his first game with a new team, and his first time playing in over a year, so it was totally normal. But how he responded to that game wasn't normal at all, as in Wall's second preseason game with the Clippers, he dropped 20 points on 5 of 11 shooting, and he looked much more comfortable out there, even pulling some DC magic out of his bag of tricks. But these were just preseason games, and the real test would be game 1 against the Lakers. And when I tell you John Wall genuinely impressed me, I mean it. Dude came out and helped lead the Clippers in scoring with 15 points off the bench. He looked extremely explosive and didn't have any problems getting past defenders or creating his own shot. Not to mention, he looked extremely quick and ran the break really well, while also dishing out 3 assists and giving the Clippers some of that playmaking they desperately needed. And despite the fact he came off the bench, Coach Ty Lue still opted to have him finish the game instead of Reggie Jackson, which shows the early trust between Coach Lou and John Wall, and that'll be key for the Clippers moving forward. But the scariest part about the Los Angeles Clippers is their depth. Nobody scored more than 15 points individually, yet they still came away with a W. Paul George shot 4 of 12 from the field, yet they still came away with a W. Kawhi Leonard didn't even check in until midway through the second quarter, yet they still came away with the W. The Clippers' depth is what won them this game. Marcus Morris dropped 14 points and hit an array of tough shots. Avicii Zubak dropped a double-double to go along with 5 blocks, and Luke Kennard didn't miss a 3-pointer. 
And the craziest part is, this doesn't even mention guys like Norman Powell, Reggie Jackson, and Robert Covington, who all had down shooting nights. The Clippers just have so much depth, and they showed us a little glimpse of what they can do moving forward. So once this team really starts to hit its stride, it'll be terrifying for the rest of the league. But I hope you enjoyed. And with all that being said, peace.